Hey guys, this is Yams from PC Flipping Central. I just wanted to make a very quick uh, video showing you guys how to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. Um, Windows 10 is going to have discontinued support in October of 2025, which is only about a year away now um, at the time of recording. And so a lot of people are kind of scrambling to upgrade their stuff or something like that because Windows 11 has some specific hardware requirements, um, which sucks because there's lots of older hardware that still works good, still works very well, that people uh, might want to hang on to or need to hang on to. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys real fast how to install Windows 11 on some unsupported hardware. This right here is a fresh gaming computer that I built. It has an Intel Xeon uh, E3 1240 which if you know about that chip, it's, it's an older chip. And the platform that it's on doesn't have some of the stuff that Windows 11 needs like Secure Boot and TPM and doesn't actually meet the official CPU requirement. So this is a fresh build. I'm going to be installing Windows fresh on it, not upgrading it. Um, right here, I have a Windows 11 USB. Uh, you can just get this from the Microsoft website and create a bootable USB. Uh, this one's 64 gigabytes. I think you only need it to be eight gigabytes, um, but it's just the one I had on hand. So I'm real quick. I'll plug this into this computer and turn it on. And then I'm going to go ahead and boot to the USB. So if you don't know how to boot to a USB, um, and by the way, this can be used if you're upgrading or doing a fresh install of Windows. Um, if you don't know how to boot to USB, you can go into your BIOS, which is usually done by turning off the computer or restarting the computer and spamming the delete key or F10 key. It may be different for everyone else, so you can just kind of do trial and error. And then you'll find your BIOS's boot menu. Usually there will be something that says USB boot, like this right here. Um, or it will be in the hard drive order but mine is already configured, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit, saving changes, and uh, boot into my Windows USB. All right, so I booted into my USB now. Um, when you first get here, what you're gonna do on your keyboard is hit Shift plus F10. So once again, that's Shift plus F10. That's going to bring up a menu that looks like this. All you're going to type is reg edit, just like this, no caps, nothing like that, and then hit enter. It'll bring up this menu. So just follow very closely. What you're going to do is hit this arrow that's right next to H key local machine. Okay. And then you're going to hit the arrow next to system. And then you can click this folder that says setup. Now you're gonna go into the menu and setup, right click, go to new and hit key. Now it'll open up kind of this new folder down here. Um, you're gonna wanna rename it to lab config. Just like this, the capital L and the capital C, no spaces, nothing like that. Now go into this new folder, this new key that you made, right click, hit new and hit D word 32 bit value. Now in this, you're gonna type bypass TPM check and then hit enter, just like that. Capital B for bypass, TPM is in all caps and check also has a capital C. Um, if you don't type like this, I don't think it will work. And then you're gonna open this, you can either hit enter or hit it with your, uh, double click it with your mouse. What's very important is you change the value data to say one. So I'm gonna have it say one and I'm gonna click okay. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go with a new D word value and we're gonna hit, or we're gonna type bypass secure boot check. And then we're also going to change that value to one. Now this is the most I've ever had to do to install Windows 11. Um, but if you need to, you can also do another new D word value and do bypass CPU check and change that to one as well. Um, I don't need to do that though, so I'm going to delete it. 
Now, once you've done this though, and you've made sure that the spellings, the capital, and all that stuff is correct, and their values are all set at one, you can just close this. Okay, and then you can go through this installation menu like normal. So I'm gonna speed this up and show you that it boots. For me, I'm installing Windows 11 Pro. Obviously, um, if you have Windows 10 Home and you're upgrading, then install Windows 11 Home or something like that. Um, if you have a Windows 10 Pro retail key or a Windows 10 Home retail key, it will also work in activating Windows 11. However, if you have an OEM key, uh, I don't think there's a guarantee that it will work. Now, I could be wrong, um, but that is something to keep in mind. All right, so now we're in the uh, the Windows 11 menu, as you can see, which you wouldn't obviously normally be able to get to if you uh, were if you didn't have those uh, bypasses in place. Um, and now you can just go ahead and install Windows 11 like normal. Um, I will say a couple things about doing this. Um, I'm not sure, but you may need to redo it in case of. Uh, a Windows update. I think sometimes uh, Windows will tell you that you don't have TPM or Secure Boot enabled sometimes when you update. Um, not That's not confirmed. I haven't seen it yet, but I have had some sites tell me that. I think I will link a Reddit forum that I saw down below. Um, you can check that out. Uh, they were talking about some byproducts of doing this. Um, but other than that, this computer is now all good to go. It runs Windows 11 and it runs it, you know, pretty well. Um, another thing I will say is even though you have the ability to bypass these requirements, sometimes you don't want to. Um, the minimum hardware that I would, I would personally recommend for Windows 11 is six to eight gigabytes of RAM and a decent dual core processor or better. Um, this computer that I have right now has 16 gigabytes of RAM and it's a quad core processor. Um, some of the older dual cores will run very slow on Windows 11. Think like the very first Intel i3s um, or think the Core 2 Duos, those type of things, or the really er early Pentiums, uh, Celerons, those type of things. Um, you will probably just want to steer clear of that since Windows 11 is a little more beefy than Windows 10. Um, obviously, you, you can run it, but that doesn't mean that it will be an enjoyable experience. Um, and then I think Windows requires around 60 to 80 gigabytes of space. Uh, I'll confirm that probably in editing this video. But you're going to want, in my opinion, at least a 120 gigabyte drive. Um, you might be able to cut it with 80 gigabytes or something. Um, yeah, 120 gig gigabytes would be more than enough for uh, at least the operating system and then obviously a couple little programs or little documents, that kind of thing. Um, and as always, an SSD is always recommended. Other than that though, uh, your new computer should be all set up, should be good to go. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or I will link our Discord server uh, in the description below and you can go ahead and ask questions in there. We have some people that are fairly knowledgeable. I shouldn't say fairly. We have some people in there that are very knowledgeable and that will uh, be happy to help you out. Uh, we're a great community in there, so you can go ahead and join that. Um, and if you found this video helpful, give it a like, give it a comment, uh, and subscribe to the channel. So I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.